your heroin to all of us blind developers because she keeps them away from the users away from us. <laughs> While we're calling out heroes, I think it's important to celebrate Gibbs work. Our friend Bela, who has done an enormous amount of work on Bugzilla over the last year. So I think we should thank them all for their help. So thank you guys. <laughs> and I think you have some slides, but if I recall right, it, it's kind of QA, like you're happy to be interrupted and it's yeah. it looks more than it can be shaped. So and Karen is going to come and give her moral support as well. So. I'm not a performer, really. But you but, do need to speak as loud as you can, please. Okay, so my title is Wine User Experience, and I want to talk about first a little bit who our users are. Last year when I kind of generally talked about users, I got the sense that people were interested in, you know, who our users are, you know, what proportion use this distro, what proportion have these problems. And I could, because I read the forum, I could of course give my impressions, but this is just what I remember, the memory is imperfect. So this year I got ambitious and decided um, I was going to try and take a more scientific look at it. So I actually scraped the forum for last year, and I didn't have time to, do, to tag the whole year. I just got this bright idea in early January. So, uh, but there were 816 threads created on the forum between July 1st and December 31st of last year. Systematically went and tagged them for things that I was interested in trying to figure out statistically, as well as anything that started to look interesting as I was rereading that stuff. So it's, it's kind of experimental. It's maybe not the most scientific approach, but it's my first stab at trying to quantify some information because, of course, on the forum there's a great deal of information about what our users are experience, but it's in a very messy kind of format. So the first thing to keep in mind, the first thing I looked at is why are they posting? And it's important as I go through the other statistics to keep in mind that this group I'm looking at are people with problems overwhelmingly. We don't hear from people for whom one is working perfectly. I mean, once in a while someone <laughs> You know, once a year, someone will post on the forum, you're doing a great job, it's wonderful, we love you. But, you know, three quarters of our posters on the forum have a specific problem they want to solve. Um, about a quarter have a question as opposed to a specific problem. And it's usually, most of those are how-to questions. How do I do this and what? Some of them are also, the next biggest group of questions are, does this app work in line before I buy it. <coughs> consideration. And then there's a there's small group of random other um, reasons for posting. Often suggestions, mine should do this. <laughs> Which being users, off, admittedly often the suggestions are simply naive. Well, why don't we raise money to pay developers to do this, which I'm sure the developers will love, but of course users don't have a clue how expensive that <laughs> So, you know, we'll give you 50 bucks to write this patch. <laughs> okay. They're well me. Um, I also looked at, you know, what operating system they're using, and now there's 98, they don't have it. We don't require to have people to identify that, but because we now have specific Linux and Mac subforums, even if they don't tell us what they're using, we know <laughs> by where they posted. So of our forum users, again three quarters are on Linux. Mac users are about 12 and a half percent and unknown, and we had two lonely free BSD users. <laughs> um, and that's about typical, you know, we get a couple free BSD um, users a year. I will say I believe the Mac users proportionally are underrepresented. And the reason is most Mac users are in fact using third party apps to run wine and that's not supported on our forum and in fact we have a sticky at the top of the forum thing. We don't support these things and essentially 
are telling them don't post it. So I suspect there are probably more Mac users out there, certainly than proportionally, but they're not going to come to our forum for help. Um, I also looked at of the people who use Linux, um, what they saw to the extent that again they identified it. Um, many didn't, but proportionally Ubuntu and derivatives other than Linux Mint are the biggest group. Um, I simply counted Linux Mint separately because they're big enough to be counted separately. They are our second biggest group. Followed by Debian and then that little wedge of other and a breakdown of how it worked out. Um, the other other is <laughs> is their distros but they were fewer than 10 people, 10 posts. So I just lumped them together. Um, so this kind of Obviously, Ubuntu dominates here. Now, keep in mind, this is a group we're talking about, a group that has problems, as opposed to a group that is representative of all our users. So one can speculate, you know, why Ubuntu users seem to have more problems. I think one of the factors is that Ubuntu is marketed to newbies. You know, they have a higher proportion of newbies in general, and the other groups that have fewer people, these tend to be more experienced Linux users who are better able to solve their own problems. So even if they have problems, they're not necessarily coming to us for help. Whereas Ubuntu users, what we see on the forum, you know, are, I think last year I said, our typical user is just finished installing Ubuntu and now wants to play World of Warcraft. <laughs> and they're not even quite sure how to use their package manager. So, um, I think that's a, a big reason why we see so many Ubuntu users. And I, again, I don't think they're necessarily that dominant in terms of all users. It's just they're that dominant in terms of who we're hearing from who has problems. Um, I also took a look at what version of wine they're using. And now, not everybody identifies that actually only about 54% actually identify. <coughs> version of wine and in the group, you know, starting at the top 1.7, which came out in August, 1.6 came up out in July. Previous development release 1.5, previous stable release 1.4, and pre 1.4, 10 people, I lumped them all together. Um, there are always random people who are using ancient versions of wine. The general reasons for that are either they're on a very old distro and there are literally no new packages for it, or they have an app that needs an old version of wine. Often they have an old patch that has never made it into wine. Their app depends on it, so they literally have to use this ancient version of wine to run this specific. Now, looking at this, it looks like, kind of like the current development release is about equal in usage to the current stable release, kind of 50-50. That's misleading. You'll see on the next chart. But keep in mind that the time period I looked at includes the, the two weeks when 1.6 first came out and it was literally the newest release. So people who normally use the development branch and update every two weeks were, of course, using 1.6 at that point. And so that's artificially high. Now, having read the forum, I knew there was a particular problem with the 1.6 branch. And the next chart shows usage by month, and I specifically did this. Um, 1.5 is at the bottom, and that goes down. That blue line, 1.6, usage was at its high point when it was released, which is not surprising because, again, as I said, people who normally use the development branch were also using that. So that initial drop is expected when 1.7 comes up because that group jumped to this. What's unexpected is the nosedive 1.6 takes between August and September, and by the end of the year, 
it's actually below usage of the previous angle of release. <coughs> and this is something for those of us who do user support, not just on the forum, but also in Bozilla in terms of triaging those. It's been driving us crazy because... <laughs> Maybe because in Ubuntu it's still 1.4 by default? Yes. That's what I was getting to. That is exactly what happened. Ubuntu shipped 13.10 with 1.4.1. We're talking about, of course, newbies. We don't necessarily know there even is something other than what their DStroms repository has, so they install 13.10, they install 1.4.1, thinking they have the newest version of Wine. They run into a problem. Hopefully they come on the forum where we're more equipped to deal with these kind of newbie problems, but unfortunately, a lot of them have, in fact, been filing bugs for 1.41, been told to retest. They find it's fixed, of course, it's fixed a long time ago, um, and you know, then they go through having to upgrade. So that's been a, a problem for the, for the past few months. Um, in terms of, but it, sh it shows how dependent um, users, particularly inexperienced ones, are on their packagers and what they're used for. They, now it's not, in this case, it's not the user's fault. They don't know any better. This is their package manager told them they had the newest version. And to be fair, whenever someone goes out to a forum for a bunch or anything like that, what they're told to do is app get install this. So when you're going to go get wine, app get install wine, and then you have wine one four, and now you're stuck. And that's what they're told to do. So is this Scott didn't update his package fast enough? I mean, what's the issue here? I mean, uh, come on, it was 2010, that's October, and when the wine one of those things came out, I mean. Came out July 18th. I think it was too late to change the uh, package. Did they have a decision which package they use for the relief and just import small bug fixes the easy way and change a package to a newer version is not allowed in the short time before release. And after the release, you have to take a big way to get a package update in the same release. I mean, yeah, 1.6 came out in July. I don't know package which, that's, which, which time I know OpenSUSE managed to <laughs> ship Maybe <laughs> in it newer versions. For example, when, don't, I don't know, but uh, for example, when Scott has holiday in this summer time, for example, just in this time, when he comes back, it may be the deadline over. Don't know. Yeah, I don't, I don't know the reasons. I just know it's causing us problems, <laughs> and I mean, this is this is abnormal <laughs> to to have the stable release drop that much. Now the development branch is, as expected, going up. Part of the reason it's going up is the other big thing that happened last year is the December Steam update basically broke all versions of Wine prior to that. It was fixed in the development branch within one day. I mean, I, no. You guys are superheroes sometimes. <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that. But of course, I spent a lot of time on the forum repeatedly telling people, you have to update to 1.7.8. You have to update to 1.7.8. It was updated in the development branch right away. That wasn't backported to the stable branch until like 4.6.2, which just came out not too long ago. So again, that's also taking from people who perhaps may have preferred to stay with the stable branch. They could have used 1.6, but of course, needing to play their games takes precedence over everything. So we have a, a sharper upturn. One question, what distributions do you use uh, like the stable branch except you do to the Debian? Because I know Fedora is not, Fedora is, uh, you know, the branch, they take whatever it feels. You know, the, the, 
decision to have this two branch system was made before I ever became involved in mine, and I know there are differing opinions. As someone who does user support, I am endlessly telling people to upgrade to the latest development release. I mean, there's a certain kind of a, a grace period after the new stable branch comes out. Um, I'll give, you know, for maybe a month or so, I'll say, well, I'm afraid it to the latest stable branch. But then I start to see that there are bugs even in the latest stable branch that have been fixed in the development branch. So I say, at that point, I start telling people automatically, try the latest development. It's a problem helping users, because those of us who help users, we're experienced users, we're using the development branch. And as it goes further in time, I don't even remember what 1.6 was like. That was, you know... But time based. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing is you don't know how many users are happily using the stable release. Yeah, you don't. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah. This is just special Yeah. So, yeah. No, yeah, that, that's... We don't, we don't. Skewed, but, so, though I think we can effectively say that that the Steam, a whole lot of Steam users were very unhappy, at least until it was backported, but we don't know. Now that it's been backported to the stable branch, they may be perfectly happy. Now, people have a misconception about the stable branch. As I said this last year, to users, the word stable means it doesn't crash. And, um, of course, that's not true. <laughs> What you mean is not true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in general, people find the stable branch cr crashes more than the development branch. In particular, if they're using 1.4.1. And the reason for that, um, the reason I'm particularly frustrated that 1.6 was foisted on the bunt, or 1.4 was foisted on a bunch of users is that the VC, v, Wines VC run in 1.4 one was not yet ready, complete enough to run most apps. That was fixed by about 1.5.9. So we're still, you know, seeing in these 1.4 people are seeing crashes in unimplemented functions that were implemented 18 months ago. And so, you know, my end, that's what has me frustrated with, with trying to help people because it, it was a, a needless problem. You know, if they'd been given 1.6, they wouldn't be seeing these crashes. Um, so, you, maybe, yes. Maybe stable is the wrong word. Maybe like slow. <laughs> Stay. <laughs> Actually, if your application works, I mean, don't change one. So it, well, then, yeah. Because this, that's stable as you You know, for those of us, again, who. six months or a year ago, it's, this is a duplicate. And so it's creating unnecessary work for the non-developer volunteers, like me. We should name the release a future fix release. <laughs> okay, the next thing I looked at is third party apps is one of the controversial things. Um, many of our users, this is basically people who mentioned having used a third-party app prior to, you know, posting wine tricks, biggest usage, not surprisingly because it's the only one that's kind of semi-supported on our forum. I said it's controversial because, you know, officially we only support plain wine. You're only supposed to file bugs. And even on the forum, you're only supposed to be using plain wine. Um, we accept wine tricks simply because those of us who do the help mostly use it occasionally ourselves and you know for my speaking for myself sometimes some of the questions about wine tricks are in fact problems with wine tricks not problems <laughs> with wine I'll answer it if I know the answer off the top of my head otherwise it's generally go report it to the guys at winetricks.org the second most common one uses play on Linux um, again controversial and people are told try plain wine and then get back to us. 
and a smattering of others. Um, wine bottler, wine skin, and obviously plant and Mac are actually all Mac um, wrappers. And this is definitely, as I said, underrepresented in terms of people who are actually out there using these wrappers because specifically we have a sticky at the top of the forum telling them that wine bottle and wine skin are not supported here. So we're, you know, we're just not getting them close. And Q for wine is a newer one. And, and we are hearing about type one. <laughs> we're occasionally getting people asking for our help. And, you know, I, yeah, I refer them to, to, to your, yeah. your, and I, I look, by the way, at your support looks very good to me. So, you know. Um, and in fact, I've recommended pipe like to some of our users to say, well, I can't get silver black to work in wine. I'm trying to I say, I think the best bet is pipe like, so go down for that. <laughs> um, so, but yeah, the, the, you know, the third party app is a controversial one because for those of us who do support, people come in having totally messed up their wine prefix by installing a bunch of native DMLs and making other changes and in the case of plan when it's possibly using a patched version of wine that's not supported and we're the bad guys who have to deal with it say so, no you can't do this we won't talk to you unless you use plain wine okay problems building wine I looked at specific kinds of problems in talk and I went to who has problems building wine um, not surprisingly, Debian's at the top of people who have problems building wine. Uh, most of our users are using packages, but, you know, there are people who, who for various reasons try to build it. Um, usually, the main reasons for wanting to build wine instead of using a D-Store package is, is that the D-Store packages are out of date or there even aren't any. Sometimes it is because they want to use a patch for one. Sometimes it's actually because they want to run a regression test. So, the reasons for Debian having such problems are multi arch, of course, and the difficulty of getting 32 bit dependencies. But there's another reason that that's that our instructions for building wine on Debian and our wiki predate the move to multi arch. So they're totally useless for current Debian. Just remove them. Well, they're, they're useful for people using really old versions of Debian. <laughs> <laughs> we have seriously had, you know, had people pleading with me for help, and I don't use Debian. I'm not qualified to, to um, give them advice. So if anybody out here there uses Debian and knows how to build, Wine on Debian, if you can take the time to update our wiki, your fellow Debian users would be very grateful, and I would be very grateful to you as well, because then I would have some accurate, up-to-date information to point our users to. Why do you hey. suppose that that problem with multi-arch is um, more common on Debian than on Ubuntu, which also uses multi-arch? Ubuntu doesn't build like that. They don't, but we also have up. Somebody did post, and I think it was actually Dan Cagle, posted up to date instructions for building wine on Ubuntu. And it's, it's literally, it comes down to people have said they have searched the entire web and couldn't find up to date instructions for building Debian. Now, I actually found a blog that looked like it knew what it was talking about, and I literally have been referring users to this blog entry. Nobody said it didn't work. Of course, the other problem is people don't always give me feedback one way or the other. But at this point, I'm pointing people to an external blog that seems to know what it's talking about, and I hope it does. <coughs> but I don't like doing that. I, you know, really, <coughs> ideally, these kind of instructions should be on our Copy and paste it from the other website. <laughs> <laughs> if somebody could verify, you know, if somebody knowledgeable about building on Debian could actually verify to me that this actually is the accurate way to do it. Well, did the users came back to you? 
They didn't. I mean, so that's the, that's part of the problem. <laughs> the problem is I don't know. The, 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 you know, the problem with dealing with users is the disappearing user. <laughs> so, you know, you give them a suggestion and never hear from them again. And maybe that's because it worked and they're happy. And maybe it's because they gave up. And maybe it's because they found a different solution elsewhere. Or maybe they died. I don't know. <laughs>
you know, the, there's a balance we have to strike because we are not a general how to use Linux forum, and we could easily become one because of the nature of our user base, because they are people who have just switched from Windows, they're very inexperienced, and need a lot of help. So at some point we have to draw the line and say, no, I'm not teaching you how to use your package manager. You have to go back to your district. But this was definitely our fault. Seems like Ubuntu could sanitize the user in place. Yeah. <laughs> you know that having a space at the beginning should show up a mysterious error that you can't figure out. <laughs> okay, so I also tried to tag threads for problems running wine, and granted, the problems are all over the place. But the keyword that came up most often was crash. Possibly because something that serious is more likely to get people actually seeking help. Graphics was second. Um, running an installer that failed was third. And the one that kind of surprised me that it was that high was fonts. And then, I, yeah, I, ju I just put up stuff that had at least 10. You know, input device includes lumped them all together, keyboard, mouse, tablet, then mono.net, sound, networking, and performance. And this was actually things that I tagged as problems, not questions. The one, in most cases, the numbers are the same. They, they're basically all problems. Performance is the one area that actually had almost as many questions as problems. And how do I, did I make the distinction? Well, there's the, in performance, there's performance is so bad you can't play this game, as opposed to it's perfectly playable, but I want every last frame per second I can get. And so we had a, we we have definitely a, a, a group of hardcore gamers who want every last frame per second, as opposed to the, this represents the people who say, you know, this is so bad it's unplayable or almost. So that's kind of a you know general range of the kinds of problems users are reporting. My experience is that this, the distinction between this is unplayable and I want the best performance I can get is kind of fluent. So it is. <laughs> I have to. Like, it is, and when I was tagging, I basically accepted the how the user perceived it because this is what I'm looking at. It's, it's user perceptions. You know, so if they say it's a problem, if it's a problem, then it's a problem. I had this crossover user who played Skyrim at seven frames per second and was perfectly happy. <laughs> um, <laughs> then there are those guys who played Counter Strike at 100 frames per second and said it's terribly slow, I want 300. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, but to the extent that I'm, I'm, from my point of view, looking at, you know, how happy are our users, how are they coping, I take their word that this is okay, or this is not okay. Question? Yeah, I was just wondering, what are those fonts problems? Uh, oh! It looks good. I have a lot of people sometimes do that. The application looks bad and they install some fonts and then... It looks either they're not rendering properly or in some cases not showing up at all. They're getting a little yeah, the misfonts basically. The application forces a font, and if it's not there, it's not falling back. So you have to have the proper font installed. So and line tricks does the job. Get the fonts and it works. In in some cases, actually, font problems turned out turn out to be actually language variable problems. People yeah. literally, you know, I'm trying to run the Japanese fonts are. If you try and run like a Japanese program, but your system is set to English, it just doesn't work. Same for us. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. You have to make yeah. sure that the locale of the machine matches the locale of the program. You do, and, you, and you can start, you know, line with the correct language variable in many right. cases. Now, in some cases, people have done that already, and the fonts still aren't showing up, and that's an actual bug. But <coughs> that starting with the lang variable is one thing that's actually not documented on our site. We have actually periodically get questions about it, but it's not actually in the user guide or the FAQ. Oh, that's so moving on, I mean that was my statistics. 
can talk a little bit about user support, or as I put it, dealing with people who don't follow directions. <laughs> and that's an oversimplification, of course, because I'm a user myself. Really. To the extent that I can help people, it's because I read the directions and I follow directions. But we have a lot of information on our site. And it's clear that people aren't reading it <laughs> in many cases because a lot of what I do is, in fact, simply refer people. The answer to your question is here in the FAQ. Yep, yeah, at BB. Now, my ba background, you know, I'm not a technical person, my background is as, as a teacher. And I tend to treat my users kind of like I treat students. Which means, yeah, I do expect them to do their homework. Um, I expect them to be willing to learn. If they're not, that's their choice, but then it's, you know, have a nice day. Um, but I also know as a teacher that dealing with a student, I can't just say, read the textbook. That's all you need to do. And I also know that if a lot of students are making the same mistake, they're just not getting it. As a teacher, I have to take a look at what I'm telling them. Because clearly, I'm not communicating effectively. So, in talking about you know people not following directions and not reading stuff, I wanted to take a look at why aren't they, and are there things that we could be doing better to make it easier for them. The example of you know, that problem with the Ubuntu page is a clear example where it was our fault when they were trying and it wasn't working. Now, it's obviously not that we don't have enough information. <laughs> um, we have a wiki with 848 pages. We have Ozilla, with, which as of yesterday was up to 35,485 total bug reports. 7,700 still open, but in terms of looking for troubleshooting, you often want to read the closed bug reports as well. The information might be there. It might be something, one of the problems is people filing bugs for things that were already fixed because they're using that old version, and we get duplicate bugs. The AppDB, where we keep our user reports on the performance of various apps, has over 12,000 entries. And the forum has 16,782 threads. So it's not lack of information. Why aren't they reading all the 65,000 pages? <laughs> <laughs> it's there, just go read it. Well, part of the problem, obviously the sheer volume of it, but the website is divided actually into four distinct areas, the Wiki, Mozilla, FDB, and Forum, which are essentially separate entities. They may be all winehq.org, but they each have a separate login. They have a separate search. And so the first thing a person coming in to the website has to figure out is, which one am I going to search? Now, should I be looking for the wiki books of the Now, if they come to the forum, and I'll keep pitching the forum, they get my help, and I'm pretty familiar with the website. And I sometimes think my main role is a cross between a traffic cop and a reference librarian. So I just say, go over there, and you go over there. <laughs> and, you know, this is the information you need. As familiar as I am with the website, there are times when I can't find things I know are there, because I've seen them before. So it, it, don't underestimate the difficulty faced by users on our website. Now let's say they decided to search more than one. They will sometimes find multiple pages on the same thing that don't agree with each other. <laughs> so I was a little bit putting together this presentation, and this kind of surprised me. We actually have four different sets of instructions.
instructions on how to file a bug. They don't say the same thing. In some cases, they directly contradict each other. And so what a user is going to do if they're coming in to file a bug and they, you know, never filed a bug before, they're not a technical person, it's in part going to depend on which set of instructions they happen to read. And if they happen to read more than one, there's a very real danger they're just going to discount all of them and do what they think best. Or they're going to pick and choose pieces. I mean, they're going to help as best they can. But this is why I think in part, and I wanted to focus in part on bugs because users, obviously inexperienced users file them. It causes problems because they file bug reports that no one could possibly even attempt to fix because it doesn't have the information needed to even think about it. Or it's a duplicate, invalid, they're using an old version of wine, they didn't read the instructions, or which set, or they read the wrong set of instructions. So are we not, like, this is a, a sort of a job that you can recruit people as volunteers to work on, right? It doesn't require skill wine, but like fixing this could be done by, there are many people in the world who could fix this, right? Whereas wine hacking is harder. Have we just not attracted those volunteers? Are we doing something wrong? Is it, I mean, is it just... Well, we have the person that we did a lot of migrating stuff to the wiki and cleaned up the wiki, but it's a lot of work, so... Did we not buy them enough beer? I mean, what... We <laughs> <laughs> didn't invite them, so... Well, why not? I mean, are we... Well, okay, this one is the wiki one, and that's probably the best one and the most up-to-date. And in terms of users actually filing bugs, um, that's the user guide. This is the one on the, above, is on the one HQ, the main page. So if users were going to Bugzilla, that's what they would see. Now, that's a lot shorter than this, and I think part of the issue is people are not actually reading this. The people who triage bugs would like them to read this and they're not. And that's actually one of the things I wanted to address is why I think they're not. So what I want to do actually is here we have it. <laughs> so here is the main page of the book. So sure you've completed the following steps. So this looks like the instructions. So let's pretend I'm a new user. You know, never, I'm not technical, but I'm a reasonably intelligent person who reads what's in front of me and tries to follow the instructions. But I'm not experienced. But I have a bug review report. And I'm reporting it because mine told me to report it. Something crashed and I got this nice pop-up saying, you know, a bug. A nice little window to capture that trace. And I wanted to walk through these steps from the point of view of someone who's never filed a bug before. So the first step, create a login account. Well, that's easy. I can do that. I create logins on the website. So I go ahead and do it. It's fine. Step two, use the available bug list. So this list shows the submitted bugs that have not been assigned to anyone yet. If you want to work on a bug, this is the place to start looking. So I, you know, I, I just installed Ubuntu ten minutes ago. <laughs> that doesn't seem relevant. I'm, you know, the, now there's a link there, and so you know, I, well, I can click a link. And, um, okay, there, there it is. There's the available bug list. Um, well, it's limited to 500, so... That's it's okay. limited to 500. Well, I could see all of them if I wanted to see all 7,700. Um, but let's not. That takes a while. But, so, as a user, I've maybe, you 